so my basic level understanding, because look, this is your career. This is what you do. Uh, my basic understanding of comics gate is this, that yeah. we've seen a lot in culture, like the film industry, where these SJW themes get pushed and it's led to a decline at the box office, you know, Disney, other things. And that comics gate is, you know, that in, in comics, that that's what has happened over the last several years. Generally speaking, is that, is that a, a you know, no, I mean, comic skate isn't that. Comic skate is the the fact of the matter is is that uh, left wing progressive activists have uh, taken over comics. They've really implemented themselves. They place themselves in high positions in comics, and they gatekeep conservatives. If you express conservative opinions, you're out. And and most of us just want to make comics. I'm I'm not here to fuck around. I'm just here to make some comic books. That's what I want to do with my life. So uh, because uh, I was. Uh, canceled. And I mean, I was canceled. I wasn't fired. I was canceled. Okay. The way like Gina Carano was canceled because of that. Uh, I've had to make my own way. I, I've had, I've got an autistic daughter. I got two Jewish kids. Uh, and, uh, I, my, that's right. Uh, and I got to take care of them and it doesn't matter. Like the, these politics, you know, uh, you don't like it that Trump got elected. I don't give a fuck. I got to take care of my kids. And this is what I do. I was put here to make comics. So Comic Skate is uh, using the internet. It uses social media. Uh, it uses crowdfunded platforms to make it so that anybody can make comic books. Anybody, Great. regardless of their politics. Creative freedom is what Comic Skate's all about. Politics come like far second to that, third, distant third to that. It's mostly about people just being able to to continue to make comic books and tell stories uh, without the uh, without having to. Uh, appealed to, you know, uh, the radical left and progressives in the uh, industry. Okay, great. Look, I agree. I've been a conservative my whole life. People can look up my donations. I've supported Republicans and, and I'm on board with, with, with all that. Um, I, I saw some of your comments about, you know, the Saska sisters. And so I was, I was curious, like they did do something previously in the comics world, right? They did for Marvel. They did the Black Widow. The Nova Strange play. We're reading this right now. Uh, so, so yeah, we want to have an opinion about this. I don't know about. I'm not. I'm not sure about their ability to write. That's not in question here. So I'm. I'm reading. I'm reading their book so that you okay. know that. Is is there anything that's particularly SJW that you've seen about that, or that is representative about? You know, the ideas mm -hmm. that you're expressing in comics? Game? No, I mean, not so far. I'm, I'm only five pages into the book. <laughs> I, mean, I just don't have time for to sit down and read. I really have to, like, take two hours to read a graphic novel like this and try to do that when you have kids running around the house and things like that. It's not easy. Um, but I am going to do it. I'm going to read it. It's not about the content of the books that SJWs present initially, activists present. They come in and they, they love bomb the industries that they invade. Uh, they do. They go around telling everyone they love them. They make friends. They're really sweet. Uh, they're a lot of fun. Uh, and they may even uh, create some good stuff the first time around. That's not what it's about. It's not about just changing the media itself. It's about taking over the entire platform uh, and gatekeeping it and making changes in it from the top down. So I haven't, uh, I mean, look, without giving everything away, just the, you know, basic description is Black Widow and Nova Strange play. Uh, it's about the lead character taking out a pedophile ring that, mm -hmm. you know, sells a terrible, you know, rape and torture of children on the dark web. Like to me, that sounds pretty freaking based. It doesn't sound SJW. It actually is innovative. And, you know, like if I'm going to be a critic of the Saska sisters in the comics world and you're in the comics world, that would be the primary thing that the most relevant thing to focus on is, is there, is there work? Is there something representative of the actual work they've done? You know, uh, representative of pushing SJW values. Well, let me ask you something. Uh, was there anything about pedophiles in X-Men one or two? Were they, was your guy, uh, what's his name, pushing pedophile child rape values in any of the movies that he produced in Hollywood? Is that how you identified that problem? No, no. Right. 
So that's not necessarily how it works, is it? You don't sit there and judge the work and go, oh, it's transparently obvious uh, what this person's actual agenda with the power they're obtaining actually is, is it? So uh, maybe a little bit of history might be helpful. A quick example, something, something else that uh, in about 2018 or 19, uh, there was a mistake with Twitter 1.0 and the Saska sisters actually got their account suspended. I know. And so I went to a friend of mine at the time, Jack Vesobic at One American News. That's the most far right, you know, TV thing there is. <clears throat> and uh, the Saska sisters went on there to talk about censorship and what happened with their Twitter and whatever. And I guess if I thought somebody was an SJW, I don't think they'd be showing up on somewhere like OAN. And yes, I know they would. took a lot. Of, well, they took a lot of shit from a lot of their left wing fans for showing up on OAN at the time. I remember that. Sure. Yeah, but you see, SJWs don't go places where they're already welcome. They go places to make changes, places where they aren't welcome. Uh, they sneak in. They use HR. Uh, they love bomb. They use all various methods to go where they all aren't already so that they can make changes. The best thing in the world that they could do right now, if they could infiltrate Comicsgate, they certainly would. They haven't been able to because you know who uh, Gate keeps Comicsgate is the fans. It's not me. Like, I'm not going to hire anybody like that. You know, I'm just not going to. I'm not going to hire the Saska sisters. I'm not going to hire any SJWs. Anybody, any woman who says she is a feminist is not going to work for me because I don't want those values working their way, not just into my comics, but into my company. Uh, so that's not going to happen. And the fans gatekeep SJWs here. But you've got a big company called Ripoverse uh, run by a black conservative uh, who was all over Fox News who's getting all kinds of credit, all kinds of stuff like that, um, invading that space. You'll put on any pretense you need to uh, in order to do that. You want to make changes there. That's where you want to make changes. You don't want to go where you're expected. You want to go where you can actually create a revolution, a little miniature revolution. Um, okay. So are there, are there specific things that the Saska sisters have done in their work or in their past or personally that you believe is is emblematic of this you know of, of what you're talking about that that's sgw that's whatever have they participated in canceling people for their political views have they done anything like no that? i think they've been canceled themselves i think that's a, a an interesting thing i mean we, we talked about that they were canceled from twitter uh, so they do have some sympathy for that, and I think that's a good thing. You know, I'm not going to say the Saska sisters are entirely unrelatable. Uh, they they themselves have been canceled from Twitter. I think that might have been why uh, Eric July became friends with them. I think that might have been why they kind of. Uh, there are articles all over the internet about how the uh, Saska sisters are mysteriously hanging out with like SJ or uh, the alt right. Uh, they're getting too comfy with the alt right, which are fascinating. But Gabe, I don't know everything about them. Uh, I really don't. Well, you knew enough I'm to... I know, I'm learning ago. about them, and I'm, I'm looking at some of the material that they produced. I'm judging their art from the past. I find it to be sadistic. I find it to be dark. Uh, and well, um, I... They're independent horror films. I mean... Horror, American is right. Mary, American Mary is like a classic. Dead Hooker in a Trunk is a classic. Look, they got chosen by David Cronenberg, one of the greatest living actors there. I, the there director, is. David Cronenberg. Yeah, uh, he's, he's a... Rabid. I mean, he chose them. Like, yeah. I, I see... Look, you may not like the, the independent, you know, horror genre, but within that genre, uh, they seem like very accomplished uh, and successful you know, story writers, not based on anything SJW or weird, just based on what they did. I think that their values are probably um, in 180 degree opposition to the values of the people who um, are supporting Ripoverse. And, and I think that evidence of this. Uh, I think that people seeing uh, those movies, I think uh, people actually um, responding to, uh, you know, uh, they don't know who the Saska sisters are. I think people seeing uh, that stuff, I think they're reacting to it. Most of them are Christians. Uh, and uh, they don't like that. They don't like uh, flirting with Satanism, which is what we ha uh, see here. Uh, they're the dark shit with uh, Lucifer Valentine, Gabe. It's, that it's is some really. It's supposed to be horror. That's the point. 
it's if not... it was all nice and good, it wouldn't be a horror film. Gabe, you, you understand who Lucifer Valentine is? Do you know who he is? I mean, you said you know, you me. understand he was their idol, their their uh, their director. The they they called him a god, uh, and he was fucking his own sister, uh, and she killed herself, and they uh, his art, not him as a person. Look, three days ago you said they were anti-Christian, lesbian pornographers, uh, <clears throat> and I'm just wondering where's the evidence for any. Oh well, they were kissing each other, so that's lesbianism, oh, and they oh made sex God. films. They they did. And, uh, and they did, a, they did a shock jock photo. Ooh, please. Well, I don't. I don't know. They I mean, I. Not... I wouldn't. I wouldn't. You know, I wouldn't kiss Mersh. Remember Mersh? God. That was. If I kissed Mersh for a shock jock thing, you would say that's pretty fucking gay. You'd say Ethan's gay, wouldn't you? Well, you're a guy, and they're girls, and they're in a certain genre. It's a little different. They're in a performative genre. Did you cancel Mersh? I did. Did you, did you pull it? Did you no, take stuff away from him? Did you uh, work to get him deplatformed? Did you do you that? you really want to talk about an, an absolutely irrelevant nobody? I mean, I'm happy to if that's what you're interested in. I, I would bet 90% of your audience has no idea who Mersh is, but if you want to talk about it, it's fine. It's up to you. Do you want to talk to Mersh? No, I don't want to talk to Mersh. You don't want me to bring Mersh in here to ask you why you took uh, you, you tried to deplatform him and uh, make it difficult for him to make a living? I... Did no such thing. See, what I'm describing to you is SJW behavior. This is what I'm saying happens with SJWs. Do you want me to bring Mersh in here and you could tell him that he's a nobody no. who probably wanna, deserved no, to have that know, happen to him? You want to know what happened in two minutes? You give me two minutes, I'll tell you. Go ahead. Yeah. So after my film went viral, right, I put it out in October 17. It ended Brian Singer's career. I did interviews all over the world including I went on InfoWars. He saw me on InfoWars. I have my DMs open. He messaged me. He asked, would you come on my show? I looked at it. They had like maybe 500 subscribers. I kind of said, you know, oh, uh, let me see, whatever. A couple weeks went by. He's sending me these messages. He's saying, look, uh, I'm, I'm, we're really poor. We're just starting out. It would really help. Uh, he you know, uh, says he was a, a victim of child sex abuse, unfortunately. He said that publicly. I'm not outing him. He asked, he begged, he pleaded. He said, come on our little show. A few weeks later, I made the time. I called in for a half hour. I, I retweeted it. I boosted it. I did everything I was supposed to. He said, keep me up on things that are going on with child sex abuse in Hollywood. There was a lot of news break. It was a topic he was interested in. I said, okay, fine. I figured this guy's just starting out. He needs all the help he can get. Seems like a decent guy. I'll, I'll send him a news article every now and then. I'll let him know what's going on, right? A few months go by. The thing with James Gunn happens. Oh, a few months go by. He asked me about Dan Schneider, the uh, the you know producer, the big guy at Nickelodeon, had a lot of stuff going on. He wanted to do something. I told him how there was a bunch of pedophiles who got arrested at Hollywood, who worked on Dan Schneider's stuff. I gave him all the links. I helped him put together the info. He made his first video that got like 100,000 views. It was a big deal for him. I was happy to help. A few months go by, summer 2018, the James Gunn stuff happens. Just like anything else, I let Mersh know this is what's going on. He didn't agree with it. I didn't argue with him, nothing. I just said, okay, this is what's going on. I'm watching the UFC, it's a Saturday night, somebody sends me a link, and I don't know what the problem was, but he starts, and there's a video clip out there, because I, I ended up clipping it, you know, with my phone, where he's, you know, hating on me for being Jewish, my faith, my faith is something I take seriously as a conservative, mm -hmm. as somebody who practices my faith, I don't bring up other people's faith, I don't attack people on the basis of faith, but he's saying all this crazy shit, I clipped it. I just put it out there that, I, you know, this is a hateful, crazy person. I never did nothing to him. And, you know, that's it. I Look, Ethan, I could have sent that clip to my attorney and told him to go to all the payment processors and all that stuff and gotten him completely off of everything. Did you go to his payment processors? Did you go no, to uh, people who were sponsoring zero. him and get his no, sponsors canceled? Zero. And you in fact, today, in 2024... 
He still has his Patreon, his PayPal, all that shit, okay? Those are facts. Now, months went by, and I don't watch his show. I could give a shit less. But people that I don't follow would DM me, and they would say, oh, the guy was crying about you for an hour today. Oh, the guy was crying about you for a half hour the other day. And I'm thinking to myself, hmm, that's why... I'm getting all these random people coming at me, hating me for me on my faith on my Twitter. Oh, that's why there's an alt account that Mersh runs that I know is Mersh runs because it's got, you know, 10 tweets on it and nine of them are promoting the show. And then the next three are coming in my mentions about me being Jewish, this, that, and the other thing. And after several months went by this shit and I didn't say nothing and I didn't do nothing, I said, you know what? What's the one way I can punch back? to get this guy to just stop because he's going on like a teenage girl for apparently hours at a time all the time about me. What can I do to punch back to get him to stop? I said, you know what? He's, he's living on in Royce's house. He doesn't have a car. I feel bad for this guy. I don't know what his problem is. He's, he's got drug and alcohol issues. You know what I'll do? He's still got the revenge of the cis Twitter. He'll always have that. I'll hit his personal Twitter. It won't affect his ability to make an income. He'll still have his PayPal, Venmo, all that other shit. But I'm going to finally punch the bully in the nose and say, listen, you, you, you know, this has been what about months. What about you bullying Ethan Ralph nonstop? Should he take something away from you? So I, Does so he have I, the right to do that? Like he's still, you're still going on about him several times a day? Does he have the right to do something to can you? Can I answer your question about Murph? To uh, you, uh, sure, go ahead. Uh, no, I'm just wondering if I answered that to your satisfaction. No, I, I'm not sure. I don't know because uh, I don't know the whole situation. Uh, you could ask Mersh himself. If you wanted to ask Mersh, I would bring Mersh in here and you could explain to him what's going on here. See, I don't like conservatives who uh, actively cancel other conservatives. I don't like that. I don't care what your religion is. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, I respect Jews. I Obviously, I was married to one. I have two Jewish children. Uh, that's not an issue with me. You're not going to be able to call me an anti-Semite, okay? Um, that's not who I am. I just don't like uh, when conservatives cancel other conservatives. I think it's the worst thing in the world, especially since we're uh, hugely uh, underdogged uh, in society right now. And I understand some problems happen and, and things like that, but when you go to try to make it so somebody can't make a living, I, I don't like that. I just don't like it. And that's what I that's what okay, I that's what I sense one. about you. That's what I see that you're kind of doing here. And I don't know why you're doing it. I mean, you took out some you took out Brian Singer, you took out some like really dangerous people. So how about if you just stick to the dangerous people and leave conservatives alone? What do you think of that? Well, maybe I got tired of what Mersh was doing after six months, you know. Well, what about out. Ethan Ralph? What when does Ethan Ralph get to be tired of you? Okay, well, guess what? I never interacted with the guy. People can look on my Twitter prior to August of 22. I never mentioned the guy's name once, okay? Okay, he, I, I... Wait, wait, wait. He came after me. He came after me. Never mentioned his name. He starts saying all kinds of shit. Then I get a message that this guy who's never seen my film, you know, I answered back, and people can look at what my answers were in August of 22. I said, dude, I, I don't have a problem with you. But you don't want any of this. Just, just leave me alone. Stop barking at me, okay? I hear you. That's what I said. I get a message that this guy, then he goes on his internet show. He's all enraged and whatever. And people can look on uh, the Kiwi Farms. They can find the summary in August 22. Because I had nothing to do with it. Somebody watched it and, you know, people summarize the shows, okay? Yeah. And this guy, apparently, he went on for a half hour attacking my faith which has nothing to do with anything, calling me, of all people, uh, a Jeffrey Epstein type, saying that I'm a pedophile and shit like that. And I, I said, you know what? I left it alone. I said, that's fucked up, whatever. And uh, then I, I saw who those Kino Casino guys were because I wondered who the hell this crazy guy is. And I went who are to the you. Casino, Kino Casino guys? What do you mean, who they are? Worski and, and, you know, uh, and, and PPT. Who are they? Like, what do you mean? Like, well, you, you see, after, who do they represent? Who are they to you? So after I, uh, after Ethan Ralph did what he did, I just said, well, who the hell is this crazy person? I went to YouTube. I typed in his name. 
and it pulled up their shows and you know they were an internet drama show that made fun of them and mm -hmm. i throw them a 20 dollars super chat every now and then that's it yeah that's the way things were for a long time and then all of a sudden october comes around with mm -hmm. Hamas doing what they did in israel yeah and all of a sudden i hear that this guy this ethan ralph is barking on twitter and on a show saying all kinds of shit that I'm not even going to repeat that have to do with like me, my family, the shit that happened in Israel. And I said, you know what? That's fucked up. That's more, more than enough. And you know what? I'm going to punch back. And guess what? I don't hide behind anything. I'm transparent. Yeah. If I report something, I say it's me. I reported it. And, and this is what I did. I don't freaking lie about anything. Gabe, you know, you said in the message to me, you said, are you man enough to face me? Are you man enough to face Mersh? Yes or no? I don't want to deal with that guy. He's like a... Why? Well, I don't want to deal with you. Uh, you. You don't have anything to do with Comicsgate. You're not here to make me any money. I, I don't know why we're talking. You want to talk about the uh, Saska sisters and say that I said some weird things about them? I mean, I don't know. How do you explain this? What is this here? Uh, Saska sisters taking pics from the Luca Gore rape van of twin little boys on the street. So cute. That's legit twinning. What are they doing in the rape van taking pictures of other people's kids? Are you concerned about this? Is this a concern of yours? You're here to justify these two to me? I have no idea what the context of that tweet is, but I know that your buddy Vito has tweeted 20 different things in a way where... Vito's going. not my buddy. Vito's just somebody on the space... Uh, you know, he's floating around here. I don't take responsibility for him. I don't know what he's about. I don't talk about him. I mean, he's just Vito. Uh, people use him to attack me. Uh, but uh, I'm just saying, what is this? These are your friends. It, se it seems like you got uh, criticisms of the Saska sisters. <laughs> my best friend, Vito. <laughs> you, yeah, got, no. you, got, you got criticisms Sorry. of the Saska sisters based on not even having re read their one thing in the comic world that seems pretty basic. Oh, I, I don't know. I, you know what? I'm going to just, I've only read five pages. They're great. The story's okay. good. Good job. Okay. I'm not talking about that. Uh, listen, well, that no, seems uh, that this is comics. That seems what, what matters is the work they put out. In well, comics. my concern isn't the comics that they're doing. Uh, my concern is that, uh, no, it isn't. My concern is that they're going to take a space and they're going to gatekeep more conservatives out. And then they're going to when, hire when people did, like you who cancel conservatives. When did the Saska sisters cancel anybody? Give me an example. I don't. I don't know. I'm not. I'm not. I don't know them that well. I, I'm just. I see things like this. I'm. I'm showing you little bits of things. I'm saying. I remember. I was there in the comic book industry when very similar people. Oh, uh, when similar. when similar similar yeah people with similar politics. Real examples of what they did. You just make shit up. That's the bottom line. Well, I'm not making anything up. I'm, I'm showing, I'm, no, I actually show their film clips. I talk about their comments. I show their tweets. I'm not when saying that, no, 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 hold on. I'm not saying they have canceled anybody. I said that about you. You canceled people. I said you canceled people. I said the Saska sisters are an awful lot. Their politics are aligned uh, with what, uh, you know, uh, the people who I saw break into comics. Uh, and ended up canceling people. I said their oh. politics are very similar. I said, you got to watch where out. They, where do they talk about politics? I, I see them as very unpolitical. I followed them on Twitter for six years. I don't see a goddamn thing about politics. They go to feminists in comics and entertainment events and point at signs that say women in comics, feminists, feminism. Oh. What's feminism? They, they go to all those events to promote their shit like, like business people would, where the fans are. Oh, I don't, I don't see non-feminists going to feminist events. I don't see that and, they, and making and a big deal the, of it. They go to the mainstream events too. Okay. Well, anyway, enough about the Saska sisters. Are you, are you willing to talk to Marsh? Yes or no? I, I got, I got no reason to talk to the guy. I got no reason to talk to you, Gabe. I'm sorry, man. I appreciate, I appreciate your being here. Uh, you know, this was a fun interview. I really appreciate your work on an open secret. Um, but like I've established that you're somebody who likes to hurt people who believe things that I believe and I got to protect myself from you. No, I, um, I, re I retaliate when somebody attacks me repeatedly. I'm never going to attack you. That's not what I'm going to do. Uh, I respect your faith. That's not who I am. But you know what? I like, I, I see what you've done. I've, you know, you've admitted to doing to conservatives and I got to protect myself from you. And I, I don't want you coming around here and giving me a hard time and attacking, deciding that. You know, you don't like something I said, and I could be a racist or something like that, and then attacking my payment processors. I don't like that. I got no, I got no reason to talk to people like that. People who attack people on the basis of faith are not real conservatives, Ethan. 
People who are real conservatives understand the importance of faith. They practice faith. I 100% agree with that. They, they, I 100% agree. People on the basis of faith is really a leftist identitarian identity politics tactic. If you have a, a criticism of me substantively, then you make that criticism. And again, it isn't the first, it isn't after the first time, the second time, but eventually in those two examples, I admit to it, I got it. these two people attacked me repeatedly on the basis of my faith. And I finally said, you know what? I'm sick of it. And in the case okay. of ours, it didn't affect his money. It wasn't his payment processors. It was literally none of them. Gabe, did I treat you wrong here? Was I unfair to you? you okay. You, you, gave I, me, uh, you gave me my ability to respond. And, you know, people can look on my Twitter. They can see the receipts. They can check out the timelines for themselves. If the chat has any questions about any of that, you know, uh, I'm happy to answer it. That's what I'm here for. Or okay. anything else. I want to right, volunteer dude. that before we, uh, before we cut off. All right, man. I, I appreciate your being here. I appreciate your being a stand-up guy and, uh, and, and you know, uh, talking to Ethan Ralph, at least, not in Mersh for some reason. Uh, but uh, I will uh, I'll, I'll hopefully see you around, okay? Take care. Yeah, Yair looks great, and I think it's going to do amazing. Thanks. Take care. All right. There we go. Hey, Marsh. How you doing? Hey, pal. <laughs> how you doing, Cubs? Uh, you know, I was hoping to talk to my good pal, Gabe. But, uh, I know. He said I no. Can something real quick? Just since he said he never got me canceled real quick. Uh, sure. I want to just go ahead and show you a little something here. Uh, he said I went after him for years before he hit back. This is from 2018. Uh, and I want you to see. Look at that, huh? Please report the linked tweet. Ethnic slur and targeting of producer Gabe Hoffman. He did this for a year straight until he finally got my YouTube nuked. On uh, my, hmm. my, uh, my Twitter. Your Twitter, I want to yeah. correct the record on a couple other things. He seems to have, I don't know if Gabe, maybe you're drinking as much as I do nowadays, but uh, he, he seemed to think, first of all, we had like no listeners when he hooked up with us. We had, a f we had not many as we do now, um, but we, he said that we did a bunch of child sex assault videos, then he hit me up, and then months later we were doing Dan Schneider shit. He <clears> found <throat> us... And he's like, and then it went viral. Our Dan Snyder stuff was the only CSA stuff we ever covered on ROTC. And it blew up. And this, this disingenuous little Mersh, could you turn your volume up or speak? I'm sorry. I don't know what's going on I'm here. Way, I'm, yeah, I'm way up. I'm going to start over. There you modulating. go. There you okay. go. Um, this disingenuous worm saw our Dan Schneider movies, uh, uh, videos that were doing well. He glommed on to us. Because all he had was an open secret. Gabe doesn't want to talk about an open secret. He should really stop talking about it because, for one, the director hates his guts. She wants nothing to do with him. Everybody that was a part of that film wants nothing to do with him. He sent lawyers to threaten Evan Henze, an underage kid that was molested, who went on that, into that movie to tell his story. They tried to use lawyers to bully him. The guy is a psychopath. He, we were not buddies for years. He didn't feel bad for us. He saw, oh, they're covering Dan Schneider. This will get the old algorithm going. And it was the first videos ROTC ever did that blew up was the Dan Schneider stuff. He glommed onto us. Then he started feeding me info like, hey, this guy's doing this. This guy's doing that. Hey, you know, you could say this about this. And then, uh, you know, but then he would start doing sleazy shit like, you go after Corey uh, Feldman and say this. It can't come from me, though. And that was like the mm. first red flag where I'm like, why can't it come from you? Say it with your chest out. Um, it, it, with the falling out, he was correct about the James Gunn thing. He contacted me because after a while, he just started treating us like we were his little, you know, his little foot soldiers. Like, no, hey, how are you? How you doing? Just this is the next thing. Get this going. Get this going. We're going. And he, so he goes, we're going after James Gunn. And I was like, Why? He said, well, you saw all the stuff. And I'm like, yeah, I see jokes. I see edgelord shit. I don't really see any evidence that he's hurting children, right? Right. And he's like, well. I went through the same thing. Let me just let me just take responsibility. Like, I saw those jokes, and I went, I think this guy's up to no good. And I felt I went for the same conclusions. I've apologized for that since. I don't think that that's true, and, you know, I feel bad about it. So We all make but, mistakes. It's one yeah. thing. But when I was countering with, hey, man, I see a lot of shitty jokes. I see a lot of stuff that's gross, but I don't mm -hmm. see anything. I don't see a smoking gun. And I was like, and this is where the falling out began. It began when I said to him, you and Mike Cernovich are trying to organize this cancel thing of James Gunn. You do realize that Michael Cernovich was arrested for rape and took a plea bargain. 
And he's like, those are just left-wing talking points. I'm like, no, it's a matter of record. He took a plea on a rape charge. Mike Cernovich used to write blogs about pulling his dick out on dates. When in doubt, whip it out was one of the blogs he wrote. I'm like, he's a sick dude. He's a disgusting guy. No, well, and then, and then Gabe had a meltdown on me in private. I'll, I'll give him that much. And then, yeah, I went on a rant that night about how Gabe's a piece of shit. And, and I exposed sort of what he was doing behind the scenes. And because I called him a, a you know sleazy Jew or whatever, he decided to cancel me. But I just wanted to show you that that is right there, right there. But smoking gun, he says he never, no, I never canceled Mersh, never once. Yeah, you've been trying for a long time, pal. And every time he gets his fees, fees hurt, he runs off and tags Twitter safety and tags Team YouTube. And is this the kind of anti semi you want on your platform? Nah, dude, I don't think that he's, Gabe is the dirtiest, dirtiest, sleaziest person in the sector. Everyone should treat him like a pariah and a leper. Because if you get involved with that guy, he will turn on you like a like a jilted ex-girlfriend. He'll do everything in his... All you got to do is look at his Twitter timeline. He's Mr. Cancel. He cancels I, more I right-wingers than like, he does left-wingers. Yeah, I couldn't believe it. It was all... Like, I was like, you know, every, every uh, month or so, I'll dunk on Patrick S. Tomlinson because it's fun. It's yeah, once a month. A mess. You know what I mean? But it's like his entire mentions were Ethan Ralph. Ethan Ralph. And I was like, there's something wrong with this, dude. That he's like Ethan Ralph, nonstop. He's like like that's not cool. Like, I mean, I, you know, you wanna you wanna make fun of Ethan Ralph once a week? I mean, but it's ever like many times a day, Ethan Ralph. Uh so uh, it just seemed kind of uh peculiar to me. I don't I don't know what he was hoping to get from me, but I hope he got it. Uh I, I'm not uh, guys. I'll talk to anyone. I will talk to absolutely anyone. I really will. But I mean, just be straightforward about what it is you're looking for, what you want to talk about. Um, his thing was a uh, real dude. He he had lawyers reach out and threaten Evan Henze. He was a kid that they interviewed in an open secret about what happened to him. I, I, I forgive me. I can't remember if it was Marty Weiss or Brian Pack. I mean, I have an autistic memory of all this stuff too. Uh, I think it was Marty Weiss, but don't quote me. He yeah. came on, he told his story about this manager in Hollywood that took advantage of him when he was a kid. When the movie got completed, Evan had such a fucking bad taste in his mouth about Gabe. He was like, Gabe was like, we got to do press. You got to start doing appearances for the movie. And he's like, I don't really feel comfortable working with you anymore. I've met my obligations. Uh, and then I think Evan Henze went on another show to tell his story. And from what I understood, the beef was essentially, let me sum it up. Oy vey, we have the exclusive rights to your uh, to your sex child sex assault story. And then some lawyers oh, wrote back to him and were like, I, I, I have to pull up the letter. It's, it's widely available on the Internet. But the gist of the letter was, are you out of your fucking mind? Like that was basically the lawyer going, have you lost your fucking mind suing a victim of child sex assault? This dude is nuts, bro. He is unhinged. Well, I wanted to give to you follow him for one day to see that. Yeah, I want. I know that you know. I wanted to give you a chance to confront no, him you, or man. have I him talk, that. but he refused to do it. And you like how I he mean, fear, he's scared of me because he knows. Yeah, because he, he knows. He was giving me the bok bok chicken thing in the. I mean, I, I was like, you're not here to talk about like uh, your movie. You want to talk about other stuff, you know? Like, and he's like, if you're man enough, I was like, shit, dude. All right, fine. Come on the show. Uh, Gabe, so anyway, Gabe is five foot two. Like, no, anyone is man enough, Gabe. He sent me a picture one time to dunk on me, and he's like, yeah, you're sitting home and alone while I'm out partying with a hot chick. And he's like 5'2", and he's got this arm around a woman who looked to be like 45 years old. And I was like, yeah, dude, you're killing it. Like, good for you, bro. I wish him, I wish him well. I, just, I wish again, him nothing like, but that's... the worst. Seriously. I wish nothing on Gabe Hoffman but pain, and, and, and oh. I want him to be ruined. Yeah. Uh, Gabe's as tall as EBS is wide, says That's Alfred. So nice. I know. It's so mean, dude. Anyway, I got to do my show, but I just real quick plug. Uh, Nightwave Radio only on Rumble. Thanks to Gabe Hoffman. Uh, Nightwave Radio, also Revenge of the Sis, my favorite show. Uh, you're, and, you're awesome, uh, dude. You're too nice to us. Yeah, you guys are great. And you have a great night. Thank you, Marsh, for being here. I appreciate you. Thanks for letting me say my piece, buddy. You bet. Adios. <laughs> it is I, the Nick. Subscribe to um uh it says here clips 